What's up? Uh, if you're watching this video on hidescience.org, uh, you're here because you missed the lab or you need to make up some points from the lab. All right, so that's what it's about is, uh, you know, giving you some points on the density lab we did uh, for unit one. Uh, you're going to do three questions. All right, all three questions are kind of similar, a little bit different. Um, it don't matter if you need full credit for the lab, you need partial credit, some credit, a little bit of credit, I don't know, whatever. If you need credit for the lab, you're going to do all three questions. All right, um, you can get full credit that way. So, we're going to start out, we're going to find the density of this aluminum block here. Now, what I notice is it's shiny, it's metallic, all right, this is a rectangular solid or a cube, which is like a squared solid, I guess you would say. But to find the density, I need to figure out a couple things. I need my formula up here, uh, and it's missing part of the formula, so let me grab my marker here real quick. So, let's say density. So, density equals mass divided by volume. So in our, in our, our variable is D equals M divided by V. And then we have units down here. We mostly deal with grams per milliliter, grams per centimeters cubed for our density. Our mass is typically grams, although you may see kilograms thrown in there some, sometimes. And then our volumes are typically milliliters or centimeters cubed. I'm not saying that's all it could ever be, but you know, 99 times out of 100, you're going to be dealing with one of those units. So in order to do this, I know... I need to make sure my formula is set up to solve for density. And in this case, density is already an isolated variable. It's already by itself. So I can go ahead and get ready to plug it in. I don't have to move anything around the formula. It's already set up density equals this. I know that I need a mass to go up here. I need a volume to go on the bottom. Mass. To find the mass, use the scale. So I'm going to turn it on real quick. I'll try to point this down a little bit. There we go. Look at there. So we got zero grams. Now we're going to place our aluminum block right here onto the scale. And we see we're at 47 grams. So grams is mass. So we're going to take our 47 and we're going to plug it in right here, right? We use pink over here. I'm just going to keep it the same when we use pink right here. So we got 47 grams plugged in for our mass. Now we need a volume. There's no little scale. Or anything like that we can do to find the volume. But there's something we can do with a rectangular solid. We can do the length times width times height. So I can do find the volume. I can do length, width, height of a solid. So here we're going to measure it. We're going to see. Let me get up here so you can kind of see. So this side here is about 2.5 centimeters. I'm going to put 2.5 centimeters. And I'm going to measure the other side. It's hard to look in the camera and do this thing. You know, it takes some mad skill. All right, so uh, that one's also 2.5 centimeters. So, um, yeah, notice it's a cube. They're all going to be the same. So we got... You know, our width, dimension, our length, depth, however you want to say it, height. All right, so we have length, width, and height. So we're going to multiply those together. All right, we're going to do 2.5 centimeters times 2.5 centimeters times 2.5 centimeters. Uh, so this is how we're going to find the volume of this aluminum block. Now, very important. Multiply them. Do not add them. When two things are in parentheses next to each other, that means multiplication. So you're going to multiply them. I'm going to do 2.5 times 2.5 times 2.5. I'm not going to do that for you, um, but when you do that, it's going to give you a number. Now, you also need to take care of your units. So you got centimeter times centimeter times centimeter. Three centimeters. That is... A centimeter cubed. So whatever our answer is after you do this, we're going to plug it in up here with a unit centimeters cubed. Then you're going to solve. Before you solve, you always need to check to see if anything cancels out, especially your units. Get in a good habit of that. So I'm going to look right here. None of those units will cancel because grams, centimeters cubed, it's a mass and a volume. They're not the same thing. We can't cancel those out. So then I'll just solve it. Do 47 divided by whatever you found the volume to be. 
Your answer should be exactly as this appears, gram slash centimeters cubed, uh, like this one right here. One down, two to go. All right, for the next one, I want to find the density of this thing right here. Now, if we look at this thing, it's pretty crazy, right? Last time we did length times width times height. Um, I, mean, I don't know, we got this little thing in there. I don't know how to figure out that. Can't get in there and get that measurement. This ain't going to get it done. We got to figure out another way. Now, mass wise, we can always use something to scale as long as it'll hold it. And this whole will hold it. So, we're solving for density again. We can set the formula up just like we did last time. We know we're looking for density. So, we're going to do V equals, we need a mass to plug in, we need a volume to plug in. So, let's start with our mass, right? So we get a scale back over here, name this down. So zero grams, we'll put this thing on right here. And 501 grams, 501 grams. Now you'll see something kind of weird. That says 500 grams. So something's lying. I don't know. We're going to go with this number here on the scale. Okay. So we're going to put in on my pink marker. There it is. Our mass, which is five. 500 grams or 0 0.5 kilograms, but we'll go 500 grams. Now I need to find the volume. I'm going to use this. Scale this down. So we're going to use volume like uh, with the water displacement method, kind of made famous by Archimedes. Uh, you figured it out, ran down the street naked, yelling Eureka, all that kind of good stuff I'm sure you've heard about. So now we're going to use this kind of as our catch basin right here. All right, so. First thing, I'm going to fill this up with water. So I got my water jug right here. So I'm going to pour water until it starts coming out the top. So water in. All right. So now it's coming out overflow too. So this is much like, you know, you fill the bathtub up with too much water. You forgot to turn the water off. Eventually it's going to overflow. This is just catching all of our overflow and moving it into one direction instead of coming out everywhere around the top. So we're going to wait for that to quit dripping. Drip, drip, drip. All right, as soon as that quits dripping, we're going to pull this out. We're going to throw it away and get ready to do it. So the whole purpose or whole thought of this is, or how Archimedes found out about this was, he was trying to solve the problem of the crown and all that. If you if you don't know, there's a video on my website showing a little cartoon somebody else made. But he found that he's trying to find the volume of something that was really weird shaped where he couldn't do, you know, length times width times height or any kind of stuff like that. So what he figured out was that he was sitting in the bathtub. When he sat down in the bathtub, the water level rose as he sat down in the bathtub. This displaced water, right? This was directly equal to how much space he took up. So back to empty. Now, I kind of put this towards you all a little bit. So then I want to find this. So the volume of this. So however much water this pushes away, this displaces, is going to be equal to the volume of this. So I can't measure this e easy, but I can catch this water. So I'm going to insert it slowly. I don't want it to overflow. All right. So now, the object pushed the water up, and it's coming out of our overflow too. So we're catching uh, the water in the overflow right now. At our overflow jug, we're catching it right here. So uh, we're going to see where that kind of ends up at. And that's going to be our volume. Looks like we're at about, oh, I can't read it upside down. About 75 uh, milliliters right now. So let's see where we're at. We're dripping. So it looks like we're going to be over the milliliter line. I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about here in just a minute. Um, i wait for it to quit dripping, quit dripping. All right, that's good enough. Whatever. Ain't got time for that. So if we look at this, it's kind of between 75 and 100. So we could... You're like, all right, it's like 90 milliliters. 
right? But that's just not accurate enough. Not when we have one of these. This is a graduated cylinder. This is going to help us be more accurate. This only goes up to 50. All right. Well, we got more than 50 in here. So we got to figure out how we can we use this to do that. If I fill it up above 50, right, there's nothing, there's no tick marks. See the tick marks? There's no tick marks. So we can figure out how it is or how much it is. So we're going to have to do it multiple times. So I'm going to come up before 50. I want to stop. So let's see here. You can see that. Can't see it real good, but it's at about dead on 48, actually. So, um, I guess it ain't, the computer ain't made for that or whatever, but a little bit below 50. If I could hold it straight, it'd be, well, it's like 47 and a half is what it was. So let's just say 48. It was right dead on 48 when I had it on the table. All right. I'm going to pour that out because we already know how much that was. All right. So, Forty-eight mils. Now we still got some left, so now we're going to do this. We can't go over fifty because that's as much as our measuring tool can go. All right. This one looks like we look at the bottom of the meniscus. It looks like it's going to be about thirty. Oh no, about forty-one and a half. All right, so I doubt that I'll be able to hold this up even, but. Let's see what we got here. Mm -hmm. oh, that's pretty close. Anyway, it's 41 and a half. So 41.5 mils. So whatever if we add these two together, that's going to tell us the entire volume of our object. So you add these together, you get a number. When you add numbers or subtract numbers, do not cancel the units. Do not double the units. So, like, if we were adding these, this is not going to be milliliters squared. Right? Or if we're subtracting them, it would not cancel. It's just going to be milliliters. No, either way. Right? Um, it's just kind of your simple math type thing. So, we're going to take this, whatever our answer is, in milliliters, pop it up right up there into the volume, work that out. Uh, make sure to include your units on your answer, um, show your work, and cool down. One to go. So, pour this out right here. I'm going to use this here. Now, where's my thing? So, next thing I want to know, I want to find the density of this. Now, we could do the pi times the radius squared times the height, but I don't want to do that. Let's use water displacement. It's easy and you get to play with water. So, water makes everything better. Here we go. Uh, turn my scale on. I always need the mass, right? So I'm gonna let you read the mass here. Oh, it's doing something weird, ain't it? All right. I'm not gonna keep up with this this time. It's on you. So I'm gonna lay my mass on there. All right. 38 grams. You're gonna need that number later. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it there for a second. You need 38 grams. All right, now we got the mass for our density. We're done. So, density. We need the mass and the volume. We measure the mass with the scale. Now we're going to measure the volume with this. So, we're going to put water in this thing right here. Can I move this? Check that out right there. Look at that yellow background. All right. So, I'm going to put this in the water. We're going to measure measure the water displacement. So I need the water level to be high enough that this will sink in it. But I don't want it too high because when I put this in it, the water level is going to rise. I don't want it going above 100. So, you know, just kind of estimate this is not as wide. I'm going to put it, you know, I'll put the water level about 50, right? So do this. I'm going to pour some water. I'm going to get it kind of close to 50. And I want to be dead on 50. So I'm going to use this to kind of fine tune to get me close to 50. So I'll move this up. All right, so 
this doesn't have the little dip in it because this is a plastic graduated cylinder. Uh, it is not polar. So now we're at 50. So our starting water level is 50. Now we're going to drop this cube in. Or, sorry, cylinder. It's not a cube. Looks like we went up to, what does that say? 60. Man, I can't see it right now. 64 is what it looks like to me. Right? A little bit below 65. So we started at 50. That was the level of the volume of the water before we put the cylinder in. Once we inserted that cylinder, the water level rose to what we say, 64. You need to use that knowledge to find the volume of only the cylinder, not the volume of the water. The volume of the water is 50. When we started at 50, when we put the cylinder in, the water level rose to 64. So the amount the water level rose is going to tell us the volume of our cylinder. Once you have that volume, now we have our mass. If you don't remember the mass, rewind the video a little bit. We got the volume, you can figure it out, right? However far the water level went up, that's your volume. We're going to plug it in here. We're going to solve it. You're going to turn your answers into me. Make sure you got your units. That's three answers. Do them all. Show your work. Show your units. You get 100 for your density lab. Um, not quite as fun as you don't get to do it yourself, but hey, next time come to school and you get to do it yourself. So that's it for this hide science vlog. Let me know if you need any more. Uh, I'll get them on here as soon as I can. See y'all.